Okay, so we're going to mess with the OP1 a little bit. I'm going to record into here and then I'll uh, send it through. It's playing through the SP currently, so... that because I don't like where it went at the end there. So. Alright, so some more chords, don't I? All right, let's try that. So we're going to do a count in so I don't have to hold this. Oh, wait, you know what? We gotta put a metronome on. That's the reason why I don't know in the world. All right. So put the metronome on. That is so fast. No wonder it's off. All right. I'm gonna change the tempo. We're gonna do like like seventy. Let's do seventy-two, something like that. You have to set the in and out again when you mess when you change it. One, two, three. Four. Just to test it, let's do this. So you see I'm humming it. All right, so we're going to do 78. In. One, two, three, four. Out. Okay, cool. So that's how I got that. Now let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna play this uh, chords first just cause it's gonna be a simple chord progression. And I jacked that up. So let's try it again. I don't like recording, so I'm just chopping that end off. I don't like recording over a melody over the thing. Some people do that. If you're in here and you only got four tracks, probably what you're gonna have to do, right? But I don't always want the melody playing the same. So I'm so if I'm doing a four bar, I'm gonna switch it. So I'm just gonna do track number two. Go back to the beginning. Let's do it again. Okay, I'm gonna slice, move. By the way, I'm hitting cut, lift, and then I'm erasing it, basically. Lifting it will like remove it. If I dropped it, it will put it back, right? So this is lift, drop. Return goes there. If you shift here, you can move between your bars, so.
this is to turn the So can I do the drums in here? Yes. These are um, Coop drum kits. I just brought them into here using the um, the old OP1 drum utility because they haven't revamped it, which again frustrates me a little bit with the OP1 because it's not like Teenage Engineer has come up with a way for us to import our own drums. If you do that, if you try to sample in drums, you got to chop them and it takes a hot minute to chop in this thing. It's not like a super easy. And I would love to see them vamp, revamp that and put put in here like a um, kind of like Koala or kind of like uh, the, S, the OP, um, the SP is done now where you have a chop, uh, a chop feature, auto chop feature where you can sit there and pick your chops versus like dialing back and scrolling back on this one and trying to, it's, it's a lot of work. That's why I don't do drums in it typically. Cause I don't like to deal with that because it's kind of a pain. If you got nothing else to do, sure. But when you're just trying to do, get something done, it's not as fun to me. And I guess that's just, you know, the workflow of the OP1, but I love the OP1 for everything else though. So let's, let's carry on. Oh, something that you got to remember too with OP1, for those that are kind of new to it, some of you probably knew. If you don't want the drums to come in that dang loud, like that hot, use this knob here, that's your meter. So you can turn it down a little bit so you don't have to work. I mean, or you can mix it, I guess, later and do that. I just like them a little bit down. Cause this, and if you really want to do individual drums, you click the drum, hit the one you want, go in, hit shift, and then turn it down. I've turned it down to six where I have it. But um, if you felt like it was really too loud, you could really go down to like, I'm going to go to nine. kind of want it back at six now. Dang it. Okay. All right. Back to the drawing board. So I'm on track number three. Now, this is doing it this way, and I'm going to show you something in a minute. Um, I'm going to, you can bring the drums in from here. Technically, that's why I have this one connected, but for right now, we're just going to do it in here so you can see it. I do use the sequencer sometimes to do a quick one. So it is easier if you want to just like, if you want perfect drums and you don't want to, so you could do this, but then if you want to change that, you got to go and shift and then erase those two, right? and come back in and put the drums in. Okay, now you got, it. and this is your um, swing, right? All right, so then you can just, so what's cool about this, what I do like is you just go, if you wanna record that, you just hold down the record and hit the button. don't like about that is I don't always know the timing is hitting right and where I want it to be on a drum. So I prefer, you got to turn sequence off too to use your drums again. I prefer just to drum it. The other step I've shown in another video is use Koala into here. If I was like traveling and didn't have um, the SP, because this is a bigger box to carry around, I would just use my phone and use Koala and I would record my drums in from Koala. And then if I was gonna do it in here, now if I wanted to, use, but to me, honestly, and I'm being truthful, Koala is a better choice to send everything into Koala and just use this for the synth and the bass and all the instruments versus the drums. I would do the drums in Koala. It's just you, but unless you want a more loose feel, and I will say this will give you a more loose feel, Right, because you can drum it. So let's do this. Let's get our count in. Three, two, one. 
Here we go. sounding so I'm gonna do it again there's an effect on these drums. Huh. Maybe not. Maybe it's my imagination. Okay. Let's do this. Get rid of that. So you can kind of hear where it's going and it's okay. We'll get rid of it. Now let's do some recording from the SP into it. So I don't have any drums in here. So I'm gonna have to load some drums real quick. Drum, oops, drums. I'm gonna use a pack that I'm kind of familiar with so that way I don't take forever on you. And I'm gonna go in here and get some kicks. We'll use that one. There's a kick, this is the LJ um, volume four, I believe. Yeah, that's the only one I have. Kind of like that. Yeah. No, put that one. All right, cool. Use a rim instead of a... Um, yeah, I like the kind of softer drum sounds, if possible. Sometimes. Just depends on... We'll use that one. It's louder too when you go in through here when you're sampling. That's another thing. The SP. Um, this is really about this, but the SP. I wish they would do is like, I, I maybe they do it for a reason. I don't know. I took the gate off of the um, whole bank here, so just hit Shift Gate. It'll remove all the gates on here, so you don't have to go through the duo manually. All right. So the purpose is to record in. So if you see here, you can see that well, as I hit this button. They're coming through. Okay. And that's courtesy of this plug. So we're going out and there and you're hearing whatever I'm playing also. So this is kind of a cool setup. If you can, if you got both, uh, not everybody's going to have both, but if they do, it's a cool setup. So then you could do this. Well, no, you can't cause you gotta, you can turn on the metronome. Go back to here and you can play in your drums. So I'm going to go. I actually went over there, so sorry about that, but. So I'm going to record these separate because the one thing I, again, why I would prefer them to put eight tracks in is because I can't mix that. So I have to make, this is like, it's almost like the reason why people say it's a sketch pad is because of that, right? You either do your drums. This is what I would do the drums in here, record everything in here and just take this and use it as the instrument into here just because of. Not that I can't do it in here, but but it frustrates me a little bit sometimes when I can't get the sound right the way I want it. So watch this. I'm going to just do this. We're going to turn the metronome back on.
And I have a firm belief in that you need to let it play back around to the next part. Don't record back around, just let it play though. And the reason is because if you cut the loop off too quick, trying to be like extra perfect, perfect, I'm gonna say that right, it'll mess up the loop and it'll still sound off and you'll be so frustrated. So words of wisdom, if you never used this thing before, or if you decide you wanna get one, when you're creating that loop, let the loop play all the way around, keep going. Uh, if you leave the tail end off and don't loop it, then sometimes your loop won't be perfect. It'll be like kinda, yeah, it'll be okay. So anyway, let's record over that now. So one trick to this is um, lift that, drop it, and then drop it again. So that you don't wanna have to go back and record if you make a mistake, you can just have it there until they ever come out with the undo that everybody's crying for. And I think people will go nuts once they get an undo. Undo and eight tracks, I'm telling you. that That's what you need, T. Come on, teenage engineering, undo and eight tracks. And that's a minimum. You put that in here, you got four here. You need All you need is some type of button combination to get to the other five, five through eight, and then at least have eight tracks in there. And I guarantee people will be ecstatic, will be ecstatic about it. But yeah, and and also because we don't need to see the tape that big, I'd rather see the track, at least the track I'm on. If I'm on a track or something like that, like I'm on three, I'd like to see the waveform. Just like if we go into here, we can see the waveform. We don't have to see it that big, but um, yeah, they could add that. Anyway, that was my rant. All right, now let's get back to the recording. So listen to this, I'm gonna cut now and I'm gonna go back and get rid of that. See how terrible that sounds? Let's do this. It doesn't sound good. Um, <clears throat> part of that, I feel, I'm gonna erase that. I would say it's the drums, but these drums hit good coming out the SP. But watch, let's go in and put their drums, or the drums I have. They sound better inside here. So that's why we need the OP1 utility app. Either revamp it, and make it full on where it's you can bring your samples in and, and fix it or just put it where we can just put individual samples in a folder on this, drop it into the um, shift. You go shift com, hit the MTP, let, or even if you have to go to the disk, let us just drop the whole folder in there and it automatically put one sample per, per um, note. That would be way better um in my opinion because recording in now the sp don't sound bad when it's recorded out by the way but it don't sound good coming in for some reason but when i bring samples in it sounds good right that sounds good Drop that down to like there. I like that a little better. All right. So, so now let's record in the drums. I can't, you can see what I mean by I can't record, I can't record out of the SP into here. So that kind of eliminates that. It's almost better just to go into the SP and bring that sound into there 
or bring it directly into the DAW using the USB-C. So it's kind of frustrating. This is a long video. I'm gonna probably end it at 30 minutes. I just wanted you to um, see what I mean when I say there's a few things that kind of irritate me with it, but I'm learning to just deal with those things and that's just what it is, you know? Oops, go back to three. All right, let's record the, the kick now. Now you might want to put the hats in. That's usually a must. Now the hats, I will say this with the hats, if you want like really nice hats on there and you want them to hit just like all spot on or have some swing or whatever and you, you're not good at doing the hats, this isn't bad for the hats. So you could go, you got to hold shift when you do it and go. And it takes the velocity of how hard you're hitting it too in consideration. I'm gonna skip one. So. I do not like that. I don't know what I was doing there anyway. Let me do that again, keeping it simple. Simple. Adjust the swing is cording. So if you do it this way, and, and another thing I think I said this, because they don't have note repeat in here, you're not gonna be doing trap hats or anything like that unless you are really good enough to know how to do. Okay, so let me show you this so you understand what I mean. Oops, go back to the drums. Okay, so you see this? You can play, there's two drummers here, so you could play two at a time. So let's do, let's do something here. Let's do, well, first of all, we gotta erase that. Let's do on this one, that's this one, okay, yeah. Let's do, Shift, and we're gonna go space, something like that, and then where is it? This is hard to find it. So you could come up with two rhythms at a time. To kind of make those hats uh, do that. Um, I'm not practiced this a lot. I'm just showing you what you can do, by the way. Um, so anyway, so you just hit record and then hold them down. stuff like that my method to this madness is the same thing I said before either do your drums in here or if you use a phone or iPad and you have koala do them in koala use use the uh, hat rolls in there and just record directly in because you can it does sound good to me in here when I come off of like uh, koala I think I've shown that before 
to where you can like have a cable and just record out from the phone. It's a lot easier. So I'm recording on the phone, so that ain't gonna happen right now, but I'm just saying you can plug in and then plug the other end into your, if you have an iPad, you probably wanna get the USB-C to USB-C, which is basically this cable. If you're using a, um, if you're using a do, 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 iPhone, then you want the one I just showed you, right? I'm trying to keep this in view for you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is reach across here and I'm gonna put this on here and just, um, yeah, like that. All right, it's just a protective thing so I can move stuff around and if it bangs something, it doesn't. All right, back to this. And what I forgot to mention was, which I didn't do and I can't fix it now because I've already recorded all this, but make sure you adjust your volumes before you do each part. Because you're recording on the same track, you can't go, it's not like I can go back and adjust in here manually each part, right? So you hear how those hats are way too high? They're just like, I can't EQ that. Um, it is what it is. It's kind of a do it and that's what it's going to be. But uh, um, let me see. What was I doing here? Bass. All right, so bass. So I did do this in bass. I was trying to take a bunch of bass one shots and bring a whole folder into those. So this is an E. So let's do this. I like that bass. Well, do I like that bass? All right, we're gonna use this bass. It's in D. So what if I wanna get it to C so I can just play it across the board? Because if I don't, it's, it's out of tune, right? And I don't know which tune it is. So you hold shift and there's a tune button. So you gotta count back. So you go D to C is gonna be two semitones. So it should be right there. There you go. All right, so then you can go back to here. I don't know what chords I played. I forgot already because it's been a minute here. Let's see. So this is a, um, technically this is an E, right? Yeah. E inverted. Okay, so it's E. So we'll start with E. record that so we'll shift back we're on track number four Adjust the panning maybe a little bit. There you go. Want to use some effects on it? Some.
turn that off now so it doesn't click in it. Take out the intruder. So you have tape stop. This is your, um, to turn off the loop, but this is tape stop pretty much, right? Reverse, this is like a stutter, lo-fi, lo uh, low pass filter. I think this was supposed to be a high pass filter. something to that effect. But you can see it sounds really good. Oh, by the way, if you plug this thing directly into here and bypass the OP-1, which is doable, by the way, let me show you that. This is going straight to the speakers. It actually sounds probably better. See? So the OP-1 going into here you're gonna you're gonna degrade the sound a little bit. I think this is 16 bit, and I believe this is 32 bit float. So when you go in from out from here, you're gonna get a better quality sound going out from here. Let's just be honest. And you try to go into here, it's gonna it's gonna degrade it a little bit. But the cool thing about here is you can use all the effects if you want to like record your music in there. And I will say that the drums hit nice in here. Don't get it twisted. They do sound really good. So using this out to the to drum is not going to be as bad as I was making it. But when you're trying to go in from something that's a lower quality and you bring coming out, for some reason, it just doesn't sound it doesn't sound as good to me. And that's just my opinion. Mind you, you're hearing it through a YouTube video, so it's going to be even worse for you. Um, but I'm just telling you, I'm very honest about like stuff like that. It's not as good. But this... Sounds better than it sounds on YouTube. So when you hear something on YouTube, especially, and mind you, I don't have the um, TX6 TE. If you see this video and you want to send it to me, I would love to have that to be able to, I'd use it every video, seriously. Um, but I don't have the mixer to do that. I only have the mixer that is in here, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you got your four track mixer right there. It's pretty simple, but they really, I really don't need the TX6 unless they send me, if they could add the four tracks in here, give me eight. And I thought about this too the other day, since we're on this, since I'm on this topic, this USB-C would be amazing if they could add the ability to use, where is it? USB-C, and then I could, an adapter where I can plug in an SD card, and then I could save put sounds in here quicker or something. I just think that would be cool if they did something like that. They wouldn't even have to add a USB-C slot. They could just, the fact that you could just add something here to add the ability to save and maybe move songs onto an SD card or something like that off of your, would just be nice. I mean, I have something like this too, where you could use it, but I, I really don't see why I need this. But this would be cool too. And either way, I mean, if you can make it where we can use that kind of stuff, that'd be nice. Or like a thumb drive, for instance, this thing here. This isn't a thumb drive, but I have a thumb drive. I could put it in there and you could just attach something. I don't know. It would just be a cool thing if they added something like that, uh, that feature to, to make your saving a little bit better. But um, yeah, anyway, love my OP1 field have my complaints like everybody else. But in the end, if you love the OP-1 and you love the workflow and you love what it does and what it could do, but don't buy it on what it could do, but buy it on what it does, 
right? Then you'll be happy with what you what you purchased. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Sorry about the popping, but it's a speaker. Let's see. So I'm gonna try to be quiet where you can hear it, but listen to the bass. I don't, it's hard to hear on YouTube, but you can feel it. Like the bass is pumping. So there's a speaker there, right? And then you know you have a speaker here. And then there's a speaker on the outside here that you can see right there. And so the bass, when it's flat, I feel it more. I can feel it projecting. But that doesn't mean I don't like my legs. I like the legs. I don't like my legs. That sounds weird. Um, I like the legs on here. And the reason is, is because I feel like when I'm playing with, I'm trying to make sure they're on there, at this angle, it feels nice. It's like a typewriter, but it just feels good. I still hear the bass, and let's be honest, I'm gonna be plugging headphones in, or I'm gonna plug this speaker cable in. I'm not gonna hardly play it with, with this speaker. It's just not that. It's good. It's better than it's ever was, and it's it's definitely decent, but it's not gonna be playing, um, the through your through a set of monitors. It's just not. It's just cool listening though to it. But, um, if you want portable speaker and you can't afford their uh, OB four, which is kind of like a little portable speaker, I think the Bose um, speakers, the little Bose portable ones they make are about half the cost and they sound really good too. You're not gonna be able to use it as a reference monitor. And you're not gonna be able to mix on it necessarily, but you can definitely use it for, um, you can definitely use it to just have fun and listen to what your tracks going through it. Um, the other option is listen to it in your car, obviously, or plug it into something via USB-C and listen if they have speakers like my computer has speakers you can listen to there and these the MacBook Pro's speakers are actually really good the newer ones at least are really good so anyway that's it that's all for this video I went a little bit more than what I was expected but I just wanted to do I hardly get to do my OP1 videos as much um because a lot of times I'm just using the OP1 as a MIDI uh controller but I wanted to use it and show you some other things that I do with it I primarily use it as a MIDI controller and I use it um, as a synthesizer. That's my two ways that I use it the most. Um, but it's still fun to record into. And when they update these features, I'm going to be more than a static to have eight tracks. Then I think I would actually use it and record into it more just because I would have a little more freedom. But until that time, you got like Loopy Pro and you got like Koala and you got other DAWs you can use that are on the iPad or iPhone that you can record into. Anyway, I'm out 40 minutes crazy. I'm sorry if it's too long for you, but it is a lot of ranting and talking and OP1 action. So hopefully uh, you benefit in some way if it helps you make a decision on whether you're gonna get one. I do still think it's a great buy. And I think because I know they're going to do more to it, they just recently had the vocoder, it's gonna be worthy. So anyway, I'm out. That's it.